27 septembre 1892. After showing the private quarters to my wife, I told her to visit the village and get acquainted with the village people. I then retired to the castle's library to read upon the history of the castle. The castle was built in the 16th century for a Germanic prince who had fallen ill. The prince inhabited the castle for two years before losing the battle against the illness. The illness in question was tuberculosis, as it is known today. Initially, the castle was quite small and didn't contain a lot of chambers and halls. However, a couple of months after the death of the prince, a storm hit the village and lightning struck. The castle caught fire and most of it burned down. Only the entrance hall and storage seemed somewhat intact. It then stood abandoned until the 18th century when a nobleman from the north decided to restore it and expand it. He quickly acquired a bad reputation due to the fact that he collected a vast amount of goods from the villagers and then kept them in the castle's storage. If a villager refused to give up his goods, he would be punished severely. The villagers were unable to do anything and could do nothing to stop the madman. A decade passed. The nobleman, now plump and lazy, ignored paying his soldiers who were now planning to get rid of their leader. They sought an alliance with the village people, who joined the soldiers in a heartbeat. That night, 13th of November, 1778, the soldiers and villagers, swords and pitchforks, marched up to the castle and ended the nobleman's tyranny. After his death, the villagers hanged his body upside down in the center of the village. However, after a fortnight, his body disappeared from the village. Some say that it was buried in the shadow of night in an unmarked grave. Others say his spirit returned it to the castle. The castle was then again abandoned until me, my wife and my servants moved in. I thought you'd like it. Just imagine what important people has walked through here. And we're the most important so far. Well, I know one of us are.
with her. Will she be alright? Is there nothing else you can do? janvier 1893. It has been some time since my last entry in this show. I have been so busy with the maintenance of the castle, especially the storage. The winter here is much more harsh than in France. The heavy snow takes its toll on the castle. The storage is constantly getting flooded because of melting snow. And to avoid further damage, it has to be drained manually. Moreover, the cold has also affected my servants. And my wife. Almost half of my staff has caught a cold or a fever. I worry for my wife, though. Her illness is different than the others. Her calves are more violent, her skin pallor and her fever higher. She is on a daily basis, wet, with cold sweats and faintings. I've called for a doctor to see what can be done.
seat alignment. In a heartbeat, I rushed with a box of seats out to the garden and immediately started digging, planting the seeds. Some plants I cared for more than others, like the Ninhut. I planted the Ninhut in its own part of the garden, separated from the other plants. The Ninhut is a peculiar herb. Discovered in 1736 by the Swedish scientist Carl Linnaeus in his journey in the Netherlands. The Ninhut plant has four to five leaves with a blue green hue and coarse roots. Some say that the plant radiates a faint shimmer at night and emits a gloomy, eerie sound. An extract from the Ninhut is an extremely potent poison. However, if diluted with another substance to diffuse the poison in the Ninhut, it may be of some use. The effects of this beverage are still deep to me. I have only tasted it once, and even if the taste is bitter and full, my body still yearns for more. Can something that my body wants so badly be so wrong?
everything all right? Is everything all right? She was asleep when I arrived. I ordered the servants to leave us. I grabbed a chair and sat down. I sat there, staring her, listening. The face I saw laying on the pillow was alien to me. It was pale, emaciated, lifeless. Her forehead was dripping with sweat. Her eyes moved beneath the eyelids, causing small spasms. I leaned forward and kissed her forehead. It was burning. I then heard a faint whisper, saying, Is everything all right? I gently whispered back, Yes, everything's all right, and kissed her again then felt a lump in my heart, for I knew it was a lie.
how I believe I found a cure for her weakness. There is no way to test it. The law says that it is prohibited to test possible fatal solutions on patients. There is nothing I can do to help her.
Thank you.